Part 2 Next topic is joint. Joint is also known as constraint. Joint is quite an intuitive name, while constraint is a mathematical name. Joint is used to constrain degrees of freedom of bodies. For example, regular joint constrains all degrees of freedom except the rotation about the v-axis. If regular joint is created on a body whose number of degree of freedom is 6, the body does move to the x, y, z direction, and there is no rotation about x and y axis. It means the number of degree of freedom becomes 1. Ricardine provides various kinds of joint. The joint is one of the important features of multi-body dynamic software like Ricardine. Ricardine makes it easy to constrain bodies using joints compared to other CA software. Joint is connected to a body to constrain it. But actually, joint is not connected to a body directly. It is connected through markers, as shown in this image. We call one body a base body and call another an action body. Base body is usually a reference body, and a body which has more motion is set to an action body. For your information, Force and contact also use this concept of base and action. If a body is constrained by a joint, reaction force is generated, and it is calculated. In addition, when a joint is created, the markers, base marker and action marker, are generated automatically. These are the most frequently used joint. You may have seen this page in the start kit. It is easy to understand how each joint works. Planar joint allows two translational degree of freedom and one rotational degree of freedom. Screw joint allows one degree of freedom. It has one rotational degree of freedom, but there is translational movement proportional to the rotational angle. Universal joint has two rotational degrees of freedom but bodies rotate while they maintain a 90-degree angle. Constant velocity joint has two rotational degree of freedom. The rotational velocity of action body and base body becomes the same. This is the table which shows the constrained degrees of freedom and free degrees of freedom. For example, regular joint constrains five degrees of freedom. This shows how to calculate the degrees of freedom of a system briefly. Each body has 6 DOFs. So, 6 is multiplied by the number of bodies, and the number of joints is multiplied by its constraint degrees of freedom. Then, we can calculate the DOFs of the system, like this. So, DOF of this system is 1. Property page of a joint can be different according to the joint type. This image shows the property page of a translational joint. Connector tab shows the base marker and action marker. You can easily change their name, origins, or orientations. In many cases, base and action markers have the same origin and orientation. So, copy base to action and copy action to base are used to copy the origin and orientation of one marker to the other. In Joint tab, you can decide whether to use joint motion, initial condition, or joint friction. Force display is to show the reaction force and apply to the joint during animation after simulation. Joint motion was introduced briefly in the starter kit. It applies motion to a joint. Then, eventually, the motion is applied to a body connected to the joint. The following four joints support joint motion, translational joint, regular joint, cylindrical joint, PTCB. There are three types of joint motion, and joint motion is defined using expression. Expression will be explained in the later part of this beginner kit, but let me explain it briefly. Expression is a mathematical expression used to define joint motion or force. To represent 
various motions or force. It is important to use expression well. Function Bay provides expression handbook for your reference, and Recodine provides expression helper in Recodine UI, like this. In addition, there are many technical tips which you can refer to. These are the three examples of expression. All of them use displacement type. First one is the joint motion using constant value 100. So, as soon as the simulation starts, the sphere moves to a position of 100. Second one is using time multiplied by 100. So, this value changes over time. At 1 second, it is 100. At 2 seconds, it is 200. Third one is a little complex. It uses sine function, so the cylinder is rotated by from minus 45 degrees to 45 degrees. You can apply friction to the joint. The following five joints support friction. For translational joint and revolute joint, it is recommended to use sliding and stiction option. The friction is discontinuous in reality, but for simulation, it is expressed as a continuous function. And these three parameters are important. Static friction coefficient, dynamic friction coefficient, and absolute threshold velocity. Absolute threshold velocity is the reference velocity to determine if it is stationary or moving. If the relative velocity between base body and action body is lower than this velocity, static friction coefficient is used. And if the relative velocity is 1.5 times faster than absolute threshold velocity, dynamic friction coefficient is used. You can use C motion to apply motion to a body directly. C motion G is a special group to apply six motions at once, like this. I recommend you to use C motion G instead of C motion. This is a C motion demo video. I apply the same motion using three examples I used to demonstrate joint motion on the previous page. On-off joint is quite an interesting joint. You can choose the desired degrees of freedom to constrain like this. In addition, it is possible to apply the constraints only when the specific condition is satisfied like this. As you can see, until time is 2 seconds, two bodies are connected as if a fixed joint is connected to them. Then, they fall as if there is no joint. Please see. See? In addition, there are joints called primitive joint. The joints previously explained so far were easy to understand intuitively, but primitive joints are mathematical joint. At point is almost the same as spherical joint. And line joint is that its action marker must be located on the direction of z axis of the base marker. In plane joint, the action marker must be located on the xy plane of the base marker. Orientation joint, the orientation is not changeable, and only the translational motion is allowed. This is useful when preventing the falling of the machine. Parallel joint makes two markers keep parallel. Perpendicular joint makes two markers keep perpendicular. Distance joint keeps the distance between two markers constant. This is the example of using primitive joints. Instead of two regular joints, one spherical joint and one inline joint are used. This is workshop 5. You can use joint in this workshop. Let me talk about parametric value and parametric points. A lot of recording users use these quite often. Parametric value is literally parametric value. They are mainly for reusability. This is one of the sub-entities. 
you can find it here. For example, if PV1 underscore radius is defined as 150, then this parametric value can be used for several parameters, like this. It can be used for bodies, for joints, for contacts. Then, if this parametric value is changed, all the parameters set to the entities are affected. So, this parametric value is useful to manage the design variables. Parametric point, PP, is similar to parametric value. The difference is that this is a vector. Parametric point is usually used to represent x, y, z coordinates or directions. Similar to parametric value, once PP is defined, it can be used for several bodies, joints, markers. For example, using PP, the location of the several bodies can be changed at once. In this image, endpoints of each stick are set using parametric points, like this. If I change PP1 and PP2, then the endpoints of two sticks are changed accordingly. Look at this. PP1 is changed. This time, PP2. A lot of Recodine experts use numerous PVs and PPs. Practically, PVs and PPs are used to define hard points of a vehicle model. And it can be used for design variables for DOE or optimization. And they are for a tool called Parameter Designer. This Parameter Designer is to manage and change multiple parameters of a Recodine model easily using Excel. Simply speaking, this Parameter Designer is a tool to modify PVs and PPs using Excel add-ons. You can find the detailed information about Parameter Designer from this link. This is Workshop 6. Please use parameter points in this workshop. Subsystem is an independent component which can improve the reusability of the model and user convenience. After Recodine is launched, we can create bodies, joints, forces, and others. They are stored in a subsystem. We call this time-level subsystem a model. In the other words, in Recodine, there is a time-level subsystem called model. Then, we can create bodies, joints, forces there. Also, subsystems in this model. Each subsystem in the model can have bodies, joints, forces in it, like subsystem 1 and subsystem 2 in this image. And subsystem 2 can have another subsystem. Each subsystem can have its own parametric values and parametric points, and its own database. Each subsystem can be simulated independently. Please note that subsystem can be exported as a file and it can be imported also. This is an example model which has three subsystems. It is possible to connect the subsystems using joints and to define contact between them as well. This is the demo video of a subsystem. If you fit the screen after selecting any entity or subsystem, only the selected entities are used for fit. It is called select fit. Each subsystem has its own database. This is the simulation result of the entire system.
it is possible to see the animation of each substance separately. This is the animation of substance D, for example. You should click Shift to select the entities in the service tab. You can use primitive joints and subsystem in this workshop. So far, I introduced body, joint, and subsystem. Next topic is force. To make a system move, force or torque needs to be applied. Force and torque are used to apply them to bodies. Like a joint, force is connected to bodies through base and action marker. Usually, action body is a body where the force is applied. Spring force parameters are the characteristics of spring and damper. But, most of the other forces are defined using expression. For example, axial force, translational force, rotational axial force, or rotational force use expression. Also, please note that the direction of force and torque is very important. This video was introduced in the starter kit. It shows the basic force elements. The axial force is applied to the left sphere to up direction. The translational spring and the rotational spring are applied to the other bodies respectively. Spring includes the parameters for spring and damper. By default, constant coefficients are used. It is possible to use nonlinear stiffness and damping coefficient using spline. Spring Force property page has a graphic tab, and you can change the shape or color of the spring. Please note that the graphic of spring doesn't affect the simulation result at all. Let me explain how to use the nonlinear characteristics for Spring Force. First, create a spline curve. Please note that x axis is delta and y axis is the force. y axis is not stiffness coefficient. Then use the stiffness spline option in spring dialog and select the spline curve you created. For details, please refer to the technical tips. Axial force is one directional force. Rotational axial force is a torque about one axis. Translational force is three directional force. Rotational force is three torques. Please note that translational force and rotational force can use reference marker. Pushing force is a force component to mount a part in a mechanical system. While fixed joint fixes the part perfectly, clearance exists in pushing force. Matrix force and screw force can apply force and torque to all six degrees of freedom. Especially, these are used to represent a user subroutine or bearing force. And there are some special forces like beam, plate, tire. I explained that translational force and rotational force can use reference marker. Also, screw force supports reference marker. The direction of the force and torque is determined by the orientation of the reference marker. Please note that pushing force supports nonlinear characteristics as well. This is workshop 8. You will create spring damper model in this workshop.